Congratulations! You are now the owner of the world's most popular home computer, the Commodore 64. Pretty soon, your micro will be going... <laughs> and... Not to mention... But at the moment, it's going... That's right. Nothing. Not a whisper. But don't worry. Listen to this tape. Flip through the manual, and pretty soon you'll be sharing the Commodore experience. So, what are all these bits and pieces you've just unpacked? They look pretty technical, eh? Not really. Let's start with the computer itself. Beneath its keyboard lies a 6502 processor, special chips for sound and graphics, and 64K of memory. Now, don't worry if you don't understand a word of that. All you need to know is that it's the brains of the operation. Next, there's the tape unit. It works just like an ordinary cassette deck, but instead of playing the latest sounds, you'll use it to load your C64 with the top 10 games, or save your own programs. There's also a power supply to provide the correct voltage, and an aerial lead to connect it all to your television. Now, everything I've just mentioned is known as hardware. That's easy to remember, because if you dropped it on your foot, you'd go... Now, a computer is a very dumb machine. It can't think for itself. Switch it on, and it'll just sit there, doing nothing. Pretty unimpressive, huh? Ah, but don't take it back to the shop just yet. It may not be able to think for itself, but it's a brilliant slave. Tell it to do something, and it obeys. You want it to solve a simultaneous equation? It'll have the answer instantly. Better still, if you fancy a game, your C64's always ready to play. The way you get it to do all these wonderful things is with programs. Now, I'm not going to try to teach you to program, not in a ten-minute tape. It would take, uh, ooh, at least twice that before you were writing things like uh, if C equals D minus 1, then go to 200, and understanding them. Basic programming isn't that difficult, and there are plenty of books if you want to learn about it. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Over the past few years, there have been literally tens of thousands of programs written for the C64. And to get you started, we've included some of the best in this package. Now, by now, you're probably dying to get stuck in, so unpack everything, consult the manual, and let's get computing! We're now ready to connect everything together. You'll need to read about this in the instructions as well, but here's the basic idea. First, the power supply. You can plug it into the computer, but don't connect it to the mains just yet. It's vital that you don't plug anything in or out of your C64 computer while it's switched on, as this might damage it. Always remember to switch off your equipment before connecting or disconnecting anything. Next, take the television lead. You'll find a socket for it in the back of the C64. Plug the other end into your television's aerial socket. Here's a tip. If you find it a bit of a bore swapping leads every time you change between your C64 and, say, Coronation Street, you could buy a two-way aerial adapter from your local electrical store. That way, both cables can stay connected all the time. Finally, plug the tape deck into the back of the computer, and if you want to use a joystick or the light gun, connect these too. Now's the moment you've been waiting for. It's time to switch on the television, the main supply, and finally, the computer. Don't worry that there's no picture. We'll see to that next. Pick a channel that you don't use for normal viewing. You have to tune this to the C64 signal. Read your television's instructions to find out how. You'll know when you've got it right, because a blue screen will appear. Once you can see what the computer's up to, it's time to get it to do something exciting. Choose a program and slip it into the cassette deck. If you listen to a computer tape, you'll hear something like this. <laughs> Ooh, it's hardly going to make the top ten, is it? Now, what you're listening to is a series of tones, played at a very high speed. Slowed down, they sound something like this. It's still not quite Beethoven, but it's music to your C64. It understands those beeps and follows their instructions. When the last one's loaded, the program's ready to run. You've still got to tell your Commodore to listen for the signal, though. There are two ways of doing this the program's instructions will tell you which to use. You can either type the letters L-O-A-D, load, then press the key marked return, or you can just press the keys marked shift and run stop at the same time as a shortcut. Either way, 
you press play on the cassette deck when the computer prompts you to do so. And in a couple of seconds, a message will appear telling you the name of the program. After that, loading is automatic. And soon you're ready to go. But what if you're not? Program tapes are manufactured to the highest standards, but things can still go wrong. It may not matter if you miss a few notes of Barry Manilow, but if just one beep fails to reach your C64, the program won't work. Before you start to scream blue murder, make sure there really is a problem, though. Getting all that information into the computer takes time, maybe even 15 minutes for the largest program, so don't panic if you're not blasting aliens within five seconds of switching on. What if a message appears telling you there's been a loading error? Or perhaps you reach the end of the tape and there's still no program? No worry. Just flip the tape over, make sure it's fully rewound, and try again. It may be that one side is faulty. Still no success. Hmm. Here's something else to try. If you've been using your C64 for some time, it could be the tape heads are dirty and they're not playing back clearly enough. Try cleaning them with a standard audio head cleaner. If that doesn't work and you can't get anything to load, there could be something more seriously wrong with the tapes or the equipment. First, get in touch with the software house that supplied the program. You'll find their telephone number in its packaging and they'll replace it for you. If you still have problems with the new software, then you should contact your dealer, who will be pleased to help. But try these other alternatives first. They could save both you and them time and inconvenience. Not that you should have any problems. Over the years, the Commodore 64 has become famous for its reliability and versatility. Whether you want to become an ace alien blaster, stalk monsters through dingy caverns in adventure games, ah! or get creative and write the next number one hit record, you and your Commodore 64 can do it. Given the appropriate software, the C64 can do almost anything. Your dealer can provide programs which will help you write letters, do your home accounts, or even turn your home into a computerized learning lab for a variety of subjects. And when you can spare a moment to drag yourself away from the C64, take a look at Commodore's Amiga series. With their brilliant graphics, ear-shattering sound, and enhanced processing power, they're the home computers for the 90s. Check out the future today with the Amiga music on the other side of this tape. But most importantly, have fun. The Commodore 64 is everything you want it to be. And more.